Hi, I'm Rebecca Elliott and this is my new book, Pretty Rude for a Girl, which is the sequel to Pretty Funny for a Girl, uh, both about Hala or Pig, as she used to be known to all her friends, who is a 14, now 15 year old girl who wants to be a stand up comedian. So I'm going to read uh, like some of the first chapter to you and apologies in advance for the bad American accent. Shoulders back and chin up, I manhandle my boobs into separate entities, determined as they are to lump together and form one sinister super boob. I check myself out in the mirror on the upstairs landing, a mirror I've had at best a challenging relationship with over my 15 years. We're still hardly BFFs and there are many days when I hate the mother flipper, but at least now she doesn't always stare at me with a judgmental glare. In fact, sometimes I kind of like how she looks at me now. I see myself less as an unfinished, poorly constructed grade school project and more like I'm the real deal. Not perfect by any means, but something worth looking at, something that doesn't need to be hidden. My body hasn't changed. I still sometimes think it's like a collection of overlapping circles, like an upturned Olympics logo, but my view of it most definitely has. I like me. I like my overlapping circles, my lady lumps, and I like putting them in clothes that enhance my meanness like the current ensemble I'm modelling this evening. A Princess Leia t-shirt covered by a tweed waistcoat, ripped jeans, white sneakers, and a red fedora hat. Good God, fashion is a lot more fun when you get over the whole, you must not wear this if you want to look thin and normal crap. Thin and normal are so overrated. Just as, I, just as I'm admiring myself like a puppy wagging its tail at the sight of its reflection in a window, I hear the whirlwind sounds of mum manically clearing up from the day's mess. I freeze. The ominous crashes move from the kitchen into the hall. I should be in bed, or at least studying. Instead, I'm trying on outfits I might wear if I pluck up the courage to do my comedy stand-up routine at the local pub's open mic night on Friday. The pub owned by the dad of Leo, the nitwit crush who used me for my comedy writing skills before breaking my hopeless heart. But hey, his dad's pub is the only place around here you can do stand-up. I mean, sure, I could just rock up to the corner of my street and start telling jokes to the group of sinister 10 year olds hanging around the vandalized mailbox, but something tells me they wouldn't be the most receptive audience. The mum tornado moves back into the living room and I breathe again. Mum likes that I do comedy and she likes that I like my reflection these days, but she definitely does not like me putzing around with these things when I should be doing something more important like helping her tidy up, studying for exams or going to bed. Honestly, I love that woman, but her priorities are messed up. As I debate whether the red fedora might be a little too much even for me, I feel the familiar buzz of a new comedy idea. I sign it and dance a jig of joy back into my bedroom and scribble down some notes before the idea falls out of my brain and vanishes like joke flavoured ice cream melting on the pavement of comedic regret. Studying can wait. I mean, there's a whole school year before my GCSE exam, so what's the rush? I rummage around in my floor robe, the polite term my delightful mother uses for the impressive landscape of clothes piled around my room, and forage for the perfect outfit to match the new idea. And eventually, after scaling Stinky Mountain and cave diving through Pants Peak, I unearth just the right ensemble. I strip down, put on a black strappy vest and pair it with the yellow fake fur coat I rescued from a pile of old 70s stuff my granny Mo, or Grammo as we inventively call her, was throwing out. Perfect. Then I make a run for it over to the bathroom and start slapping on mum's makeup. I'm not aiming for sexy here, I'd say I'm going more for a look that is mad clown meets Kim Kardashian. And when I'm finally satisfied that my face is weighed down with enough cosmetics to frighten a small child, I turn my attention to my hair. I back comb and scrunch it up with great fistfuls of mousse until my hair to face ratio is similar to a billiards ball being spooned by a poodle. I return to the mirror. I look, well, perhaps not ridiculously fabulous, but definitely fabulously ridiculous. Back in my bedroom, I sit in front of my phone, which is glamorously propped up on my desk against a box of tampons. I pull my mouth into a patronizing grin, press record, and start a brand new YouTube video. Hi everyone, it's the PFG here. Did you know that seven out of 10 teenage girls hate the way they look? 
I know, right? That is shocking. Just terrible. I mean, the arrogance of the other three. But seriously, I think we should all celebrate our beauty. Now, I'm a bigger girl, in case you hadn't noticed, which I'm sure you hadn't, because who really cares about what girls on the internet look like, right? And I'll tell you what really gets on my tit end, and that's the shed loads of blogs and vlogs telling me what, as a plus-size girl, I should and should not wear. You know the kind of thing. Then, with a super happy, preppy accent, I launch into a spoof of all those helpful videos. Hi, it's me, Stacey Biatch, and I'm back with my latest fashion tips for the unfortunate. Okay, this one's aimed at all you gorgeous big girls. Oh, you super-sized, sexy, curvaceous, fatty bone baddies, you know who you are. And you should be proud of who you are, whilst at the same time hiding it. So no one else has to pretend to like it. So what we're going to do for you today is tell you what you should not wear if you want to pass as human, okay? Okay, how exciting. Let's start. So first off, you want to determine what body shape you are. There's the hourglass shape shape, the inverted triangle, the pear shape, but as this fits for big girls, I'm going to go ahead and presume you're potato shaped, which just means big all over. Okay, okay. So here are my top five tips. One, invest in some shapewear. Girls, you need something industrial strength that will suck tuck, punish, and torture your body into some sort of recognizable girl shape. Repeat after me. I do not need full use of my internal organs. I do need to look thinner. Two, wear heels. Chances are you have stubby little legs, and who wants to see those? No one. Literally, no one. But good news, jelly bellies. Alarmingly high heels are your Friend. They will make you look up to 3% sexier and they're only 35 times more uncomfortable and you just can't argue with that math. So go high or go home ladies. No, don't attempt stairs. Gravity and inelegance are against you and you'll probably end up in an ambulance. Okay, okay. Three, speaking of legs, do not wear leggings. Same goes for skinny jeans. I mean, the clothes in the title, dummy. These garments are made for good looking people. Not you. Four, wear one color, preferably dark, like black. That way you can just melt into the shadows like a roly-poly ninja and people won't have to endure the sight of your disgusting bulges. Remember, you won't cause a scene if you can't be seen. Five, don't wear anything tight. Don't wear anything baggy. Don't carry a small bag or a big bag. Don't wear patterns, anything crop, anything masculine, white belts, thin belts, pleats, stripes, turtlenecks, boat necks anything with pockets, ruffles, fur, feathers, basically if it's got personality or charisma, it's not for you. I know you're probably desperate for friends, but trust me, these clothes are not your friends. They will ridicule you behind your big fat back. And really, why bother with fashion at all? You're just shoving a bargain store sausage in Fifth Avenue wannabe wrapping, and that's just deceitful. Okay, okay. So that's it, girls. Have fun with my tips. And if in doubt, just stay at home where no one will have to see you. Okay, bye for now. The forced grin falls from my face. Back to my usual sarcastic smirk as I return from being Stacy Biatch. I knowingly roll my eyes and shake my head at the camera. See you next time, beautiful people. As I stop recording, little excitement puppies scamper through my brain. The audience's laughter might not be there, but the high of performing feels almost the same as doing a live gig. Also, I can feel this stuff is funny, even if it is maybe a bit rude to fashion vloggers, who probably do mean well, I guess. But I've got to have an edge, otherwise I'm never going to get noticed. Not that anyone's actually watching these videos. I started making them about a month ago under the handle the PFG, like the BFG, but pretty funny girl, obs. And so far, I only have a handful of subscribers, which is why I haven't actually told anyone, not even my best friends Chloe and Cass about this. It all seems a bit too dumbass pathetic. I'm mostly making these videos for my own benefit anyway. 
I spend so much time writing new material, but with nowhere to actually use it, I needed a reason to keep writing and practicing my performing. So far, one gig in London and one disastrous, don't ask, local open mic gig is all my stand-up career has amounted to. But hey, just like applying stretch mark cream, if I keep at it, eventually something good will happen, right? Right? I grab a fistful of mum's cleansing wipes and start mopping away the makeup, watching in the mirror as my face gradually looks less like a child's colouring book. Just as my freckly features are revealed, my phone vibrates. It's a message from Chloe, trying to persuade me again to do the open mic on Friday, using about 16 pleases. I reply, oh, I don't know, you don't remember last time when I exploded the stage with my ass, right? If you don't know what this refers to, I'm not going to tell you. It's too bull crushingly embarrassing. Cass joins the conversation. Cass, but you were great before that happened. Chloe, though your butt, your butt did get the biggest laugh of the set. Cass, Chloe, me. Though she's right, it did. My booty could headline at the Apollo. Chloe, you donut that made me laugh and sponge my nail varnish. Me, sorry. Chloe, no you're not. Me, so not. Cass, go on pig, it'll be fun. Chloe, OMG, you used the P word. Cass, fanny farts. Sorry, I meant hey, me. It's cool. My name is Hayla, but Pig was one of the many nicknames that had been unlovingly hurled at me at school. Then, like a boss, I turned it back on the bullies by claiming it as my own and insisting everyone call me that. But in the end, I totally rejected Pig, breaking away from how other people viewed me and debuting the real me. It was a sort of rebranding, a way of saying to the world, I'm not what you see me as, a dumpy, insignificant girl from a broken home. I'm Hayla, a big, brash, proud comedian extraordinaire. So get used to it or get the hell out of my way before I mow you down with my epic boobs. And I think I'll stop there. So uh, sorry about my dog snoring through the first half of that. Don't know if you caught that. That was well done, Frida. Thank you. Anyway, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did like it, um, you know, like buy the book or get it out of the library or steal it from a friend or, or something. Uh, and maybe like do a nice comment below, that'd be nice. And if you didn't like it, then I mean, don't buy the book because that'd be really stupid. Uh, but also you don't need to comment uh, because that's just mean, really. Uh, anyway, that's it. So uh, bye for now. Bye, bye, bye.